Hi boys and girls, today we're moving on to a new topic. We're moving on to algebra. Now we've done a little bit of algebra before, earlier in the year, where we substituted an unknown number with a letter. But today we're going to be moving a little more in depth into that topic. So we have some new vocabulary words that I would like you to write in section two of your homework sheet. We're going to go over those words right now. The first word is expression. What expression is, it's a number sentence without the use of an equal sign. And we'll show you some examples of those in just a little bit. The next word is equation. An equation is a number sentence that does have an equal sign. And an easy way to remember that is if you look at the word equation, the very beginnings of the way the word is spelled start just like the word equal. So that's a good way to remember that an equation is a number sentence with an equal sign. The word simplify for this purpose means to solve. And the word evaluate, whenever we see that, also is going to mean to just solve the problem that we see. So if you can copy these words and their meanings into section two of your homework sheet right now. Let's move right into some of our examples. All right, example numbers one and two ask us to simplify the problem. So many times we're not actually able to solve an algebra problem. They just want us to combine some of the terms or some of the letters that we see into a smaller number sentence. So I want you to take a look at example number one. We have 8n plus 2n plus n. Now we know whenever we put numbers and letters together, when we smack them together, that is just like having a little multiplication sign in the middle of them. And anytime you have the same letter, you can actually combine those terms all together. Now, notice right here, next to this end, there's no number. Does anyone know what that means when there's no number there and just a simple letter? What it means is that there's kind of like an invisible one there. It means that there's just one n, or the n is just worth one. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have 8n plus 2n plus n. So since all of my letters are the same, since all of my terms are the same, all being letter n, I'm just going to combine or add the numbers together. So I have 8 plus 2 plus 1. 8 plus 2 equals 10, plus one more is 11. And because they all are attached to the letter n, I'm going to move the letter n over here as well. So 8n plus 2n plus 1n equals 11n. And that's as far as I need to go. They did not tell me what n is equal to or give me any other um, amount that it's equal to on the other side, so I don't need to go any further than that. So I've simplified that problem. Let's take a look at the next one. I have 5c minus c in parentheses minus c. So I notice that all my terms are the same. They're all c's, which means that I can combine them. Now I notice that I have parentheses, which means that I need to use the rules of order of operations. So as we know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, our order of operations. We have parentheses first, exponents, which we hardly ever use in fourth grade. Some of us have. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now in this problem, the two operations that I have are subtraction and parentheses. So if we look up here at our rules, we see that the P comes first. So whatever is in the parentheses, we must do first. So we have 5C minus C, or 5C minus 1C. 5 minus 1 equals 4. So this is worth 4C. And then we move on to the rest of the problem. 4c minus c, or 4c minus 1c. 4 minus 1 equals 3. So my final answer would be 3c. I've simplified that problem. Now let's move on to something else, a little more familiar. 30 divided by n equals 6. Now we know that our letter right here just stands for an unknown number. So another way that we can say this problem to ourselves is 30 divided by some number equals 6. And if we know our multiplication or division fast facts, we know that 30 divided by 5 equals 6. So this tells me that n must be equal to 5. And if I were to plug in the number 5 right here, 
the, the number sentence would work out and it would be true. 30 divided by 5 does equal 6. Let's take a look at the next example. x times 2 equals 18. So I need to ask myself, some number times 2 equals 18. And again, if I know my multiplication and division fast facts, I know that x must be equal to 9 because 9 times 2 will give me 18. All right, let's move on to some different types of algebraic expressions. Here we have a problem, 80 divided by a minus 5. And I need to evaluate this expression. I need to solve to see what this is worth. Now in these types of problems, if they don't tell you what it equals, they have to give you some other piece of information. So in this case, they have. They've told us what A is worth. So all we need to do is plug it right in. So in a way, we can almost rewrite the problem. 80 divided by 10, because they told me that A is worth 10, minus and using my order of operations, I have parentheses, so I must do whatever is in parentheses first. 80 divided by 10 equals 8, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. So my final answer would be 3. Let's try the next one. 24 divided by 3 times y plus 7. Now it may look a little tricky, but all you need to do is break it down slowly, step by step. Now this problem tells us what y is equal to. It says y is equal to 3. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the problem and plug in the number 3 wherever my y is. 24 divided by 3, in parentheses, times 3 plus 7. Now we know with our order of operations we must do whatever is in the parentheses first. So let's deal with this set of parentheses to begin with. 24 divided by 3 equals 8, and 3 plus 7 equals 10. I then need to bring down my multiplication sign, and now I have the simple problem of 8 times 10, which is equal to 80. So all types of math that you're used to doing, simple addition, simple division, simple multiplication, you just need to be very organized and neat and plug in those numbers wherever they tell you to. All right, let's move on and give you some problems to try on your own. In box number three, I would like you to try to solve problems one, two, three, and four. For problem one, you are evaluating, trying to figure out what this is equal to when W is 7. For this problem, you are simplifying 11m minus 2m. For number 3, you are trying to figure out what n would equal. And for number 4, you're trying to figure out what x has to be to make this number sentence true. And as a challenge, what I would like you to do is try to write a real world example, so in words, a type of word problem that would show n plus 30 equals 65. So think of an example of parents or friends doing something worth money that would equal to $65. And just give me your best example on your homework sheet. All right, boys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, or strategies, be sure to put that in box number four of your homework sheet, and we will go over them in class tomorrow. You've been flipped with Mrs. Manafo.